Christensen is traveling on 605, the main highway for both locals and military convoys heading south from Camp Leatherneck. He travels in a massive air-conditioned bomb disposal truck named Buffalo. We've had you know, dozens of IEDs just along this little stretch of road, basically between, you know, for a one kilometer stretch, we've had more IEDs than just about any other section of the road. The 605 is dirt, which makes it easy to bury an IED. The convoy includes a metal detector and marking vehicle that can detect the buried bombs. Its name is Husky. Hey, as I understand it, you guys need some... But today, Christensen is relying on a report from a nearby platoon to find his quarry. What we're going to be doing is a real meticulous, methodical sweep down this road, and that'll, that'll be able to say, hey, this road is clear, no worries, but at least, at least as long as we have eyes on it, we can know it's, we can know it's safe. To as, to as good a degree as we can ever say the road over here is safe. Suspicious activity is reported at an abandoned compound. Christensen needs to leave his armored vehicle to investigate. The things we're looking for out here is our trigger men. We're also looking for trip wires or pull cords. They can be tried to trigger an IED. So people are watching. As Christensen makes his way, he finds a marine patrol near the suspected compound. We got some information that there's a compound on the north side of the road, just a little bit further up that uh, had some irregularities, some metallic hits, some uh, indicators. Other than that, there's a lot of IEDs right down on the strip of road right down here, so it's a possibility they had a metallic hit and some indicators that one of the doors might have been booby trapped. Okay, uh, good luck, shoot straight. <laughs> The area appears safe, but a dismal reminder of what damage an IED can do is near. That was a cargo truck. They're going down the road here, and they hit probably, I don't know, 40, 50 pound charge. Destroyed the vehicle, killed the mother, the father, I think one of the male relatives, and uh, one or two of the children. We, had, we medevaced one of the children, and uh, I don't know what the, if the child survived or not. The road is more hazardous for the locals than it is for us because we have vehicles that'll survive it. Their vehicles, if they get hit, it's, it's catastrophic. Each truck has a V-shaped hull. If an IED explodes, the blast is deflected to the sides. The team advances to the next location of a reported IED. or anything like that. Cordon gets set, nobody comes through. Keep the local nationals out, one for their safety, and two, because they may be doing intelligence gathering on us, looking at what we're doing. They find an IED. The technicians go to investigate, then report back. Three actual trouble. This bomb has a pressure plate as its trigger, meaning anything driving across it would explode. Our camera could only film from a distance. Hey, uh, this three okay. I got a um, unknown power source located right next to a supervised container. Not exactly sure how big. We're going to uncover it, and at that time, if they can pull it out, we're going to destroy it and the field. Fire in the hole, fire in the hole, fire in the hole. This is something new to the team. Most IEDs are around 40 to 50 pound explosive devices. This IED had seven Chinese-made mortar shells lashed together, packing a charge closer to 140 pounds. The systems are getting more sophisticated, powerful. I saw there was a lot of frag that flew off of that, a lot of metal, those mortar shells. Shows a long ways, can go up to 300 meters, so. Took that out. Hopefully, we don't find any more, and uh, hopefully, nobody else other than us finds anything. Okay. 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 